Welcome back to the show. My name is Evan, along with Renee Montgomery. Hello there. All right, Anderson Silva was very close. Well, had a, had a close connection with DMX, I should say. He really loved his music. He used DMX's uh, song, Ain't No Sunshine, as his walkout for years. Whenever people in MMA arenas across the world heard that song, that was Anderson Silva's theme music, right? That got him pumped up. It got the, it got the fans pumped up. It was, a, it was a, as much a part of his fights as the actual action itself was that walk into the ring. It was amazing. So when DMX passed away last week, tragically, at the age of 50, um, Anderson Silva was really affected by it. And we spoke with him the other day and asked him, like, you know, how are you, how are you doing? And also, are you going to be uh, trying to work in a tribute to DMX at your upcoming fight against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., a fight that's going down in June? Take a look. DMX is part of my life, you yeah. know, and I, I'm very sad. Man, are you going to do something special to honor him at the fight, maybe? Come out to his music, maybe? I for sure go using okay. the music, yeah. because it's part of my life. Yeah, so there will be a musical tribute to DMX on the way out to Julio Cesar Chavez. Uh, his first boxing match in years, by the way, that's going to be a big deal to see Anderson Silva fight a, a career boxing star like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who's been in the ring with guys like Canelo Alvarez. That's going to be an interesting fight on its own. But now to see the tribute to DMX that's going to happen on the way into the ring, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. Yeah, I'm intrigued, but it goes back to say, you know, like, he didn't just say DMX's music was important to me. He literally said it was a part of my life. And, I like, people take music that serious. And so if there's an artist that they love that creates that music, they have a special connection with them. So, I mean, I think that's added motivation for him for the fight as well. Like, you know, yeah. if you're going to do a tribute, you want to do it all the way. You don't want to just walk out to the music and lose. Yeah. You want to walk out to the music. You want to win. And you want the music playing when you walk out. And so, I mean, it just says, like, I I've heard multiple people. We talked about people have tattoos of DMX's lyrics. Uh, Steven Jackson is one of them. People are connected to music in a special way, and you yeah. can just see it here with him. I will say this. I'm smiling because I remembered something that happened over the weekend. I, uh, I have a daughter who's five, and my son is three, and we were talking about DMX. Uh, my wife and I were talking about DMX in front of the kids, and I was like, let's, let's put on some music for the kids. <laughs> and I forgot um, that a lot of the lyrics in a Language. lot of the songs... <laughs> Contain contains words that a five year old and a three year old should not hear. So I kept putting oh on the song. I was like, oh, next song. Oh, next song. Oh, next song. And finally, I was like, maybe when you guys are a little older, we can do a proper <laughs> proper history of DMX. But that was, I should have known, but that's my fault. I for sure go using okay. the music yeah. because it's part of my life. Welcome back to TMZ Sports. My name is Evan, along with WNBA superstar and co owner of the Atlanta Dream, Renee Montgomery. And Renee, that's very important leading into this next story because. Uh, you are in that ownership world of, you know, you were a co-owner of the WNBA team, and now there is another massive name that's being kicked around as somebody who's very, very close to finalizing a deal that would make him an owner of a WNBA franchise, and that is Alex Rodriguez. Him and his uh, close friend, Mark Lore, who is the CEO and president of Walmart for, from 2016 to 2021. This guy's a billionaire. He is loaded. He likes Alex Rodriguez. The two of them are reportedly this close to buying the Minnesota Timberwolves of the NBA and the Minnesota Lynx of the WNBA. I know the Minnesota Lynx are a storied franchise in the WNBA. Uh, you played for the Minnesota Lynx. You partied with Prince after you won a championship <laughs> with the Minnesota Lynx. But my question for you is, how do you think an Alex Rodriguez affects not only the franchise, but the WNBA as a whole? We've talked a lot about how there is massive opportunity for the WNBA to grow, to explode, really. How does Alex Rodriguez affect that, and what's your advice to him? I love what's happening. I love the athlete-owner thing that's happening right now, and it's happening all over. It's not just A-Rod. I mean, there's WNBA players. Uh, Candace Parker has ownership in the NWSL. You know, Naomi. It's like there's a lot of that happening. What I think is it just constantly adds to the brand, and I hope – and I, I really do have a good feeling that A-Rod will understand that he's getting a gym in the Minnesota Lynx. It's not just any WNBA team. It's one of the best WNBA teams in the league. It ha it's a dynasty. Uh, it has excellence on and off the court. Their organization is great. So I hope that while all this talk we know is a lot about the Timberwolves, I really do hope that they understand what they're getting in the Minnesota Lynx. 
What's your advice for him on how to make that franchise grow? Like, what would you say to him? Like, here's what I would do if I was you. I know that you are a co-owner of a different team, but like, it, you know, it, obviously the goal is to make is to take the whole league as a whole to the next level. So how does Alex Rodriguez contribute to that? I would tell my advice would be to everything that you want to do to invest in the Timberwolves, do the same thing to invest in the Lynx. Don't make it two different projects, two different type of ownerships. If you're going to be an owner of both, be an owner of both. So what does that mean specifically? You know, that means that, like, if you're going to invest time in, in acquiring a deal for the Timberwolves, well, make sure that brand is just as on board for the for the Lynx as they are for the Timberwolves. Make sure that you're aligning yourself with brands that understand you're not just an owner of an NBA team, you're owner of a WNBA team as well. So get brands who want to invest in the other things and don't have it just be throw-in deals with the Minnesota Lynx. Like, they need to treat them as they're both big commodities that you have in your portfolio. Yeah, I and then as far as the Minnesota Timberwolves go, I mean, that's that's a big deal also. I mean, you know, yep. that's a, it's a storied franchise going all the way back to, you know, the, the Kevin Garnett days and Flip Saunders yep. and all that stuff. Uh, but look, Alex Rodriguez, he didn't really make his name in basketball at all. He's a baseball player. Can he have the same impact in the basketball world that Magic Johnson, for example, had in the baseball world? Magic Johnson, who is uh, one of the co-owners of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and ever since... He went over there. The Dodgers have really turned everything around and become one of the four, one of the premier teams in Major League Baseball. Now, I don't know if he's single-handedly responsible for that, but obviously he played a major role. Can Alex Rodriguez learn from Magic Johnson and apply those same lessons to the Minnesota Lynx and the Minnesota Timberwolves? Oh, absolutely. I think that if the thing that people are going to start seeing about athletes that are used to winning, a la Magic Johnson. You get used to winning on all levels. You know, people tell me all the time that, like, when I'm responding to emails at 1 a.m., catching up, people think I'm crazy. Like, oh, aren't you off the clock yet? To me, I'm not off the clock until the job is finished. So I think that people will start to see that athletes that are used to excelling and being good and winning, that carries over not just in sport but in business. And I think A-Rod is going to have one of those, those type of situations where he's going to want, like, he knows that he's a new owner on the block, and he's going to want it to be good. And, and for that reason, he's going to make sure it is. Do you get starstruck? I know you've been around a lot of really <laughs> famous people for a very long time. You tweet with LeBron James all the time. But, like, if you see Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez at a WNBA game, are you going to be like, oh, oh my God, that's, that's J-Lo and A-Rod? Listen, of I'm going to be like, yo, that's J-Lo. That's crazy. <laughs> and if I see Issa Rae, it's a wrap. I will lose it if I see her. So uh, I don't know if there's very many people I would be starstruck about, but... Issa Rae is one of my favorites, like, all time, so I would probably, like, fangirl all the way out for that. <laughs> Welcome back to Team Z Sports. My name is Evan, along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up, guys? Renee Montgomery. Hello there. All right, this is an interesting story about an up-and-coming boxer who's been bothering me on social media for a long time, saying, hey, man, you got to give me some shine. Put me on TMZ Sports. Literally, this guy named Dylan Price, he hit me up a while back, and he's like, how do I get on on the sports show, you know, I'm a really good boxer, I promise, uh, and, I, and I, I just want an opportunity to kind of help break through. And I said, I told him, I said, look, man, go win fights, keep training hard, and if you you win a bunch of fights and you prove to you know be really good at this stuff, I'll put you on a show. And he did that. Dylan Price, 22 years old, and he's 12 and 0, and you know I've been following him, and he's been he's been winning in spectacular fashion, and he's been training like a maniac, and he's got a fight this weekend, April 17th in Philadelphia. He's fighting a guy named Elias Joaquino, and he's fighting for the Intercontinental Championship. This is Dylan's first title fight, and like I said, man, I feel like he's earned the right to be here. I respect him. I appreciate the work ethic, and so I'm gonna let Dylan right now tell the people why they should watch his fight this weekend. Take a look. People can expect to see fireworks. Uh, I'm ready. I'm looking to dominate um, for round one. I'm excited. I'm just ready to show everybody what I'm really made of. This is my first title fight, so it's just giving me that extra push to go out there and perform. Five years down the road, I'm looking to have a boatload of money. I'm looking to put my father up. I'm looking to put my little brother up. Uh, and I'm just looking to, I'm not going to be retired. So I'm looking to have a boatload of money a bunch of world titles, and uh, just looking to take over the 115-pound division. I want everybody to know that I really am the real deal. I'm coming for all of the top guys, and if the guys that's coming up there with me, I'm going to meet them at the top. I'll, meet, I'll see you at the top, too. Uh, I'm confident. I feel like I went through all my growing pains and the professionals, and I'm just ready to go. 
and I'm going to start April 17th by showing them. What do you think, man? I, I love this guy's attitude. I mean, he's confident. He's a little bit cocky, which I kind of like, too. If you're going to be a successful boxer, you got to be a little bit cocky. Yeah. And, and he's been backing it up. He's 12-0, and, and and he wants to put on a show. Yeah, being good is not good enough these days. you got to have their personality to match. You know what's interesting? About a week ago, I was watching one of Canelo Alvarez's first fights. Canelo is now the biggest star in all of boxing. This was from about 15 years ago. And the announcers were talking about that Canelo possibly had what it took to be a star one day. And look what he has become. With a guy like Dylan, now you have an opportunity to see somebody who maybe five, ten years from now might be one of the biggest stars in boxing. And you can watch him where it all began. And I think that's fun. I, I like that. I like watching the guys before they blow up. Everyone knows that everyone's going after the bag. They want all the money. But I love him hearing him say that he wants to do it for his dad, his family, his brother. He's obviously going to be somebody that I'm rooting for. So I wish Dylan nothing but the best. Tuning into your fight, my man. Yeah, man. No, don't let us down, Dylan. No pressure, bro. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm looking to dominate. All right, Renee, you know we can't end the show without talking about the WNBA draft. This is a major night, not just for the league, yeah. but for you. This is your first draft as a WNBA co-owner of the Atlanta Dream. Yeah, it's crazy because, like, I, I can think back to 12 years ago. Like, a couple days ago, 12 years ago, I was getting drafted. And I remember thinking how nervous I am. So I just know that the, I know the anxiety that the players are feeling, but it's also crazy to be on the other side of it because this is probably about the only time that a team has control to, to pick the players. After free agency, you got to get the players that want to pick you and you got to wine and dine them and make them excited about your club. So I'm just excited to just have my the first addition to the family I'm looking at it as. So, yeah, I'm turned like I woke up feeling ah, good today. That's why I put my shirt on, man. Good vibes. Good vibes all the way. Yes, good uh, vibes look, the only. Dallas Wings have the number one overall pick and selected Charlie Collier out of Texas. She's a she's an impressive player, you know, and as a person who's had a very successful WNBA career and then pivoted to the owner's box, what's your advice for somebody like Charlie who has such a high ceiling? Yeah, you know, my advice for Charlie and all of the top picks is that enjoy it. I, I say that knowing that I didn't enjoy it as much as I should, but then when you think about what you're doing, you're about to be playing the game of basketball as your actual job. You don't have class anymore. Think about that. That's crazy because we used to have to balance both. That's crazy. But be a student of the game. I think a lot of times, young players, you come in and just try to rely on your talent. But watch all the film. Even when the coaches, there's a lot of film coming. Watch all of it. it. You'll see in points in the game where you feel prepared. So I would just say, be a student of the game. You're already done with the books now. Be a student of the game. Listen to Renee Montgomery. She knows what she's talking about. Seriously. Welcome to TMG Sports. My name is Evan, along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up? Renee Montgomery is in Los Angeles. I am. Hello there. Yeah, we got a big show today. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff, including uh, your first your first time actually being in the owner's box during a WNBA draft. There's a lot going on there. We're going to get to that in a little bit. But we got to start with the big story of the day. We have obtained surveillance video of the Aaron Donald incident that he is uh, accused of beating the crap out of a guy. But his attorney, the attorney for the NFL superstar, says the video not only exonerates Aaron Donald, but shows that Aaron actually went out of his way to save the accuser when a mob began to beat him senseless in the middle of an alley. So let's let's start at the beginning here. As we previously reported, a man named DeVincent Spriggs filed a police report against Aaron Donald, saying on the early hours of April 11th, outside of a nightclub in Pittsburgh, that Aaron proceeded to like beat him mercilessly, like smashing his face open, uh, causing a broken orbital. His eye, you can see, is swollen shut. He says he suffered an arm injury. And he basically said that Aaron Donald, the best defensive player in the NFL, the superstar defensive end for the LA Rams, was responsible for the attack. Well, now Aaron Donald's attorney is coming out and he is firing back hard, saying that they have obtained surveillance video, which we also have. We're gonna show you in just a minute. But before I play it for you, I want you to hear what the attorney, Casey White, had to say, kind of setting up the video, and then we're going to show you the video. So here is Casey White explaining what he says actually went down in that, uh, in that bar. Take a look. Mr. Spriggs starts barking towards Aaron, and he's yelling, and he's drunk, and he's aggressive. And Aaron sees something in his right hand. And at first, he thinks it's a gun. And Aaron's at this point like, oh, my. But it's actually a bottle. It's a, it's a long liquor bottle. And this guy goes at Aaron went and swings with his right hand, and Aaron ducks. The bottle then grazes the top of Aaron's head, 
Aaron has a lump on his head from the bottle, grazing the top of his head. And that's when all hell breaks loose. So as this fight or escalation, you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, continues, Aaron then breaks free from the restraints. And this is all on video, so I'm not making this up. He then goes to the pile where this melee is taking place, and he starts tearing people off, protecting Mr. Spriggs. He actually saves Mr. Spriggs from further injury. So to recap, uh, and Babcock, correct me if I'm wrong here, but there was an altercation inside of this, uh, this, this party where Aaron was at. Right. And then the attorney is saying that Spriggs waited for Donald outside in the alley and then attacked him with a bottle. And then when the people around Aaron Donald saw that he was being swung at, it sounds like he was actually hit with the body, connected with the bottle, uh, that Aaron Donald's friends then proceeded to beat this guy mercilessly. And when Aaron realized that this guy was on the ground and out, he races over to the injured person, even though he was attacked by this guy and ripped him off. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's exactly correct. That's what we're being told. And that is obviously a totally different story than the, than the one we originally got, you know? So Aaron yeah, Donald has, has, let me, let me, has let me, went from let, allegedly assaulting somebody to actually now allegedly being a hero out there in the dark alley. So well, let's, let's see the video because yeah. here is the footage that we're told police have this in their, in their hands right now. And you yep. can see the, the man that you're watching getting thrown onto the ground. It we're told is De Vincent Spriggs. Who's the man, uh, you know, who is uh, taking action against Aaron Donald right now. And then you see Aaron, go over and start breaking people up. You can see him throwing people off. Well, and then at some, some point, somebody grabs Aaron Donald and then just pulls him away from the pile entirely. But Donald's attorney says, and you can see right here, other people go back to try and get some other shots in. So it looks like uh, security personnel are, are breaking this thing up. But what's clear to me is that Aaron Donald, at the very least, de-escalated and got himself back in the middle of the situation and broke up the mob from attacking this guy, they could have killed this guy. He was clearly yeah. injured. It could have been a lot worse. But I think what if, if, if all of this pans out, if all this turns out to be true, then I think that this exonerates Aaron Donald. Yeah, you know, for me, the first thing I think about is, thank goodness for video surveillance, because a whole different picture was painted. And because Aaron Donald is a celebrity, because he's a superstar, of course, that's the only person you knew in the fight. That's who you're going to blame it on. But it actually went from... He went from being the guy who's being the accuser to he actually saved that man's life. I think that's the craziest thing because, as you talked about, it didn't look like anyone was going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, and they go back to the pile. So what we don't see here is, is the bottle being swung at Aaron's head, which is obviously a, a key part of the situation here. But the attorney says he has that as well. And in theory, the police now have that also. We haven't seen that part of the video yet, but if the attorney has what he says he has, showing Spriggs attacking Aaron Donald with a bottle and then Aaron defending himself and then other people coming in and taking down Spriggs because they fear that somebody's life was in danger, I think that pretty much spells doom for Spriggs' case here, Babcock, unless I'm missing something. No, I, it's complete doom, and you wonder if Aaron Donald actually has a case then because... Uh, you know, this accuser has painted him out to be a guy who was uh, getting violent and hurting people in an alley when it looks like, at least from the video that we're watching now, Evan, that Aaron Donald was actually the peacemaker and might have prevented this guy from getting really seriously injured or even killed. And, and, and again, if the circumstances that Aaron's lawyer are saying are proven to be true, which, again, it appears that way from the video that we're looking at, that Aaron Donald raced over and broke this thing up, could you imagine that, getting hit with a bottle and then being, having the presence of mind to be like, even though I'm hurt, I got hit with a bottle in my head, I've got an injury on in my head, I know that my friends are going to, you know, that everyone's, there's adrenaline going. And he runs in the middle of it and says, everybody needs to break this thing up. And he may have saved this guy's life. He absolutely saved this guy's life. And something else that I think about is Babcock, yes, he probably should press charges because I don't care if I got grazed, barely hit. First of all, you tried to sue me and I saved your life. But second of all, you actually swung a bottle at my head, which I don't know if people know this happened to somebody when I went to school. That can kill someone. That oh, happened. yeah. So to me, you he like he thought it was a gun at first. Imagine that with what's going on in the climate in America. Yeah. yeah, I think that something needs to be done because, again, if we didn't have this footage, it would be a completely different story for Aaron Donald. Yeah, I think a lot of people would say there's no way that a guy would go and try to attack Aaron Donald, one of the biggest, scariest, most explosive guys in the NFL. Who out of the, who's out of the right mind? Who would do that? Nobody. But now you're seeing here uh, at least a video that seems to back 
and support Aaron Donald's defense here. And I think this is huge for him. I think the LA Rams are going to be very happy. I think the NFL is probably going to be very happy with this. And obviously you heard from his voice, Aaron Donald's defense attorney is very happy. He thinks that this is case closed at this point.